Good afternoon and thank you for gathering with us uh, this day to remember a beloved family member and friend, but also to make sure the memory of John and Cindy live on. My name is Tom Sneer. I am the Newport News Fire Chaplain. Let us pray. Heavenly Father of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, we humbly come before your throne of grace and mercy. From the very presence of death we call upon you, and you are the giver of life. Your Son, Jesus Christ, is the source of eternal life. You know our hearts, Father. You see our grief. And only you can give us peace and comfort. Only you can dry our tears. And only you can soothe our pain. We cling to his promise. Because I live, you shall also live. Thank you, dear God, for Jesus' victory over death. And for the grace and love that you share that victory with us. Comfort us in our loss. Deepen our trust in our Savior and strengthen our resolve to live for him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4, it says, Blessed be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercy and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we are able to comfort those who in any affliction with the comfort that which we ourselves are comforted by God. In John 14, 1 through 3, it says, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. So in the scripture, it's just saying that um, anything that you have gone through, trials and tribulations, you can be an encourager to someone else. Every one of you in this room are a minister of Jesus Christ. And you can share that testimony of how God had gotten you through those trials, those tribulations, and those crises in your own life. How you experienced and how you've been encouraged yourself. I have never met Lieutenant John. However, from what I hear about him, I would like to sit down and learn about him and learn about his family. So, I heard he was in the Coast Guard. And so, I was praying last night and yesterday about um, things that I was going to say because I didn't know him. And I didn't want to manufacture anything. I wanted to be authentic. The best that I could possibly be by looking at the obituary and talking to his son, John, and find what him and Ian wanted me to speak about. Um, so the things that I've come up with is, the sea washes over the golden sands, advancing when retreating. And life is like that too. We come and then we go. John is gone and Cindy, and even though we say our goodbyes today, they will always be in our hearts and minds. We grieve their loss, Yet we know that we must all go on and go out with the tide one day. We are celebrating the fact that John and Cindy illustrated all the best that there was in the services that they served in. With the fire department, at the hospital, I heard they were totally opposites, but they loved each other dearly. And they were great teachers and training many nurses and many firemen, the EMTs. And that legacy lives on through them today. And so in his personal life in this retirement, that's a very proud boast. Because it is a proud service in both areas. It makes demands of its members in the hospital and in the fire department that few, if any, can do that job. And the work is varied and it is dangerous. And firefighters find themselves rescuing someone from a river or at a scene or a horrific accident off the two river bridges that we have here. But John was, and forever will be, a fireman first. In the line of service, and to save lives and protect property, as he did for 30 years with the fire department, and as Cindy did as she was at the hospital, to leave that legacy with other nurses. I heard from Sister Bernard in the back, she said one day John told her in the hospital that his feet were hurt. So she went to give him a pair of socks, and the socks didn't fit. He's like, these are too small. 
So she went down the hallway to find him some other socks. And so three other nurses said to her, what are you doing? Well, we're trying to find socks that fit John. So the other three nurses brought socks. Everyone had a different size of socks when they went in. And they were trying to be like Goldilocks, which one fit the best? <laughs> so it was an amazing story that she got to share with me before she had to leave to go back to the hospital. You know, and so as much as John loved the fire, being a firefighter, John had a very deep love for his family. The love for his wife Cynthia, which most of them call her Cindy, and to everyone and every day, um, he looked at her the same way that he looked at her as it was the first day that he met her. And I believe that his goal in life was that he would love her even more the day at the end of their life that he loved her when he first met her. And I hope that lives on with your families. So I believe that they shared marital bliss for 38 years, and now they are reunited in heaven. Not all marriages are perfect, and we have our ups and downs. However, they still loved each other, and they were with each other till death do us part. His sons John and Ian, whom John is forever proud of, as his whole family, and especially his grandchildren. John was a hardworking man, and he worked to make his family's life as comfortable as he could. Even when he was tired and exhausted from the heat of the day, he always had time for his family, his wife, and his children. John was many things to many people, and his sincerity of friendship is shown by the fact that you are all in this room today, and that you cared about him, and he made an impact in your life somehow. Many of you have come to celebrate his life. He may have been a neighbor of yours, an old school friend, or you worked with him, or even he did some sleight of hand magic in front of you, which he did in the hospital to calm children <coughs> and to calm adults. You know, uh, and somebody asked him once, I believe John, you told me, or I read it, that, uh, John, how'd you do that? He said, very well. <laughs> very well. So that, that's just amazing in itself, because I can't do anything with sleight of hand. So. Uh, I tried. I tried with little balls last night and to do some kind of illustration. I couldn't do it. It just didn't happen. You know, he loved his time in the Coast Guard, and he shows his pride in everything that he does. He was a simple uh, colleague and one of the best. He was a man of integrity and dependability and a true giver. And just as the sea has death, so too has mankind. John had depth of soul and mind that no one could ever fathom or know. Yet like the sea, he had his frothy moments too. When he was happy, he was like the sea when it dances in the glittering sunlight with his sails. And like the sea too, his life had color and movement and depth. To say that John will be missed is an understatement. You will miss his hands on experience of the job and off the job, the training legacy that he has passed down, one generation after another to the many people in this room. John would do anything for anyone at the drop of the hat. If you call, he would be there to help and support you through and through. He has left you all with many memories of a good person who lived a good life. And he meant different things to all of you, holding on to all the memories of him, always being so cheerful and optimistic. So like the child who fills his bucket at the edge of the sea, does not understand what happened when it slips away from him. We heard too a John's leaving and it's Cindy being gone. However, one day you will see them again in heaven. We find it hard to understand like that child who bowed to the inevitable of all, uh, of it all through we too are crying. The sea has its moments of anger and John was human enough and went through trials and tribulations like each and one of you. And he hoped his example, that how he got through those things, would be your examples to get through these things. Yet after each storm, there was always a calm. So it was with John. Yes, he also had days when a falling wind brought dance waves to the surface of the sea. Today, when I speak of John, I hope and pray that you, his family, will take comfort and the fact that he was much admired and respected. 
Think of how wonderful the world would be if everyone had the same qualities of John and Cindy. They were stern when they needed to be, and they had a loving and tender-hearted side. They were quick-witted and extremely funny, and if you were in their inner circle, they trust you. And when he pushed you, that all meant that he loved you more, because he saw the potential that was in you that you did not see in yourself. John was perfectly blended of skill and value of what a father or a husband should be. The legacy that he lives in this room is a great legacy. And please remember that he loved you with all of his heart and that you matter to him. Make sure you say I love you to who you need to today because there are no I love you tomorrow. Because our lives are like a vapor in the wind. They appear for a little while and then they're gone. There are unfortunately too, there are unfortunately too few that are like John. Today he joins the ranks of the brave firefighters. Cindy joined the ranks of the great nurses that are all in heaven. And they are all on the honor roll, in the honor of our hearts. Those who are an inspiration to those that are in service for us all in this room today. They will be spoken of with pride of those who know them. And they will be remembered not only as heroes and teachers, but also as well-respected colleagues and friends and family members. So as you say your goodbyes to John and Cindy, we know that some little incident, some little joke, maybe some sleight of hand will remind you of him and her, and they will live on in your memories and your hearts. When you stop remembering, that's when they cease to exist. So I'd like to open up for anybody that would like to share about John or Cindy. You can stand right where you are, or you can come up here if you want to, if you'd like to share about that. Yes, sir? Last funeral we all in a firefighter, I got up and spoke a few words. There was moans and groans from the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm known as long-winded. No. So it's like, oh no. <laughs> you know, it really hurt my feelings. I'm scarred for life. <laughs> but I've overcome. I'm going to tell you something. I've worked. I'm retired at the Fire Department. I'm Brian Eubank. And I spent my last 11 years at Station 1 downtown. <clears throat> and uh, I don't think as a firefighter, a retired Hampton firefighter in this room, that I didn't work for or with during my 30 plus year career. I was very proud and always have been of my badge. I'm the only firefighter in my family. And, uh, but I tell you, I don't know exactly what year I met John, but uh, I think it was probably doing an EMT refreshing school or CPR training class, research class. But I'll tell you one thing, any time you uh, had a class with John Dow, of course, the first thing you got to do is show you magic tricks. And of course, they were always good because just like you, you could never figure them out either. And his sleight of hand was really good. When I was, when I was at Station 1, they would say, uh, do you want to work 24 hours overtime? Well, I didn't want to work 24 hours overtime in the business files and amp. I said, I want to go to a slow station. But well, they said, well, you want to go to Fox Hill? That was a slow station. And I said, well, who's off? They said, John Dow. Definitely want to go down there. Because John Dow, like I said, oh, absolutely wonderful to work for, easy going. You couldn't ask for a final lieutenant. So uh, you boys, i tell you one thing, y'all have a lot to be proud of with your dad. Because not only was he, uh, a nice, nice guy, but he was a true asset to the Hampton Fire Department, and we all thought the world of him. So, that's it. Anyone Nobody has mentioned that he was a charmer. 
that much on me. <laughs> but I found that we can't have something like this without music. So we decided to sing for it. And for him. Sing My name is Brian Singles. Um, I'm a retired firefighter from Hampton. I'm, I'm not going to try to be as long-winded as my friend Mr. Hugh Banks. And I'll fly it in, that's fine. Um, back early in my career, back in the early 80s, anyhow, the, the BLS ambulance was, if they had a KLS call, they would medic split run, and John Dowd was on Medic 9, him and his crew. And it was always a comfort to see John and his partner show up on a call that involved an ALS patient because he was very professional, took care of the patient, um, dedicated to his job as a medic, and then later on when he made lieutenant, just like uh, Brian Eubank said, he was a great officer too. I never did work actually for him as an officer or with him at Station 9, every now and then I would get shipped into Station 9. And that was a, that was cool because, you know, go to Station 9, ride the engine, or stay at with, and take six out of the ambulance call. So I went, I went to Station 9. Plus, I was a junior guy, so I didn't have a choice. But anyhow, um, that was a fond memory back then, and even even as when we went to our retired luncheons, just to hear John tell stories. Of course, we all told stories about you know the old days. I guess I can say the old days of forty years ago. Um, one of the funniest stories I remember him telling was, I guess, when he was at Station Nine as a medic. I guess he was a junior guy, and back then we had the Kelly days. You picked Kelly days, and I guess. He got what was left on a Kelly Day sheet, and then when he got transferred to Station One, working for Donnie Frommel, of course they're doing the picking Kelly Days, and of course Donnie Frommel, he was his lieutenant. He goes to John and said, "You need to pick your Kelly Days." 
John goes, I've never ever had a chance to pick my Kelly days because when you're senior medic, you get to pick your Kelly days. So that, that was probably a good feeling for John. But I don't think the whole time John Dowd ever worked in the fire department, he never had any enemies. He always had a smile on his face. He always made you laugh. Great, great guy all around. Great guy to work with. I'll, I'll always cherish memories of, of John Dowd. children that were coming into his house was the best part of it. And I remember every year him setting up all of the little village and every child that came in there, every one of us would come in and be so excited. And we'd go into this big kitchen with Aunt Cindy, spoons flying and you know, oyster stew being made in this dip that I still can't perfect. <laughs> And I just wanted to speak to their their generosity to their family as well. So thank you for giving your time. Goodbye, Uncle John. I forgot I had something in my phone from Virginia. Can you all hold on Okay, so I um, had a group text going on with Amber and Aunt Ginger and Aunt Maureen. Um, and Virginia sent, if you could go, if you could send. Yell at me if you can't hear me. I'm not good at voice. Have the good. microphone yeah. if you want. And we've always watching. So that's okay. It'll be fine. It's, 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 it's always a learning thing with public speaking. Yeah, I love it. So this way we're live streaming. Hope we've heard your experience today. Okay, so we're going to listen. If you pick up my phone to call Uncle John, you may have trouble locating his contact. He's not in there under the use for Uncle, although Uncle he is to 17 of us on the downside. If you could walk into a family beach house a week of 30 years ago, you would see Uncle John surrounded by nieces and nephews making coins disappear and reappear to the amused smiles and laughter of an adoring crowd. And you won't find him under the name given to him by his parents, John Dowd, although that was his official identity. The man whose hugs and kind eyes would always check in. How you doing, hun? Who would sincerely care what was going on in your life, when, and when his eyes light up with pride, you would feel the best news somehow being served by the morning. No, if you want to find Uncle John in my phone, you'll have to type in S A N T A. <laughs> in retrospect, probably the name best suited to describe the man this niece loves and adores. Joyful, generous, full of warmth, kindness, a bit of belly, rosy cheeks, magic, and love. And whose ho ho goes on Christmas Eve this year will be missed by generations of kids. I wanted to say that too, but I can't. So which uh, nephew and grandchild is going to learn how to do magic tricks? <laughs> <laughs> and pass it on. Yes. 
So you have to get with your cousin, right? Cousin Brad? Yeah, and learn the tricks that John showed him. So that you'd be able to keep it going for the uh, family, keep that legacy alive. It'd be a great thing. So anyone else would like to speak? My name is Jason Douglas. I'm a worker at Mary Immaculate Hospital. I met John back in 2011, and he was my CPR instructor. Of course, the magic was there, literally. He was there with a sleight of hand. Uh, the unfortunate part is, over the years, they went with a more computer-generated source for a CPR. And I would beg any person in the ministry, can we get John back, can we get John back? For every two years, I got a chance to hang out with him. Uh, it took me a long time to make the connection between him and Cindy. And then I, it was confusing to me, I'll be honest with you. Uh, just the differences between the two people, love them both, they both taught me so much. Uh, when she passed, of course, he was not around for a while. And, was greatly missed because he's one of the few people that you just see in the hallway and you're like, all right, I'm stopping what I'm doing right now. I want a little bit of FaceTime because he had this magic to him, as we speak about, that he made you feel special because he was such a special man when you could talk to him and relate with him. And of course our paths being very different, me being physical therapy and him being a paramedic, Somehow, we could still tie it together because it's patient-centric. He went on to become, or I treasure him as the person I enjoy arguing with the most. Because we could have an argument about anything. It came to the point that I would even kind of think about what it was I wanted to argue with about today when I saw him. Uh, so many lunches and time spent were just just awesome and I'm gonna miss those uh, even getting to see him in the last couple of days I know that he was kind of torn apart by the fact that he couldn't pull the tube and argue with me a little bit because that's what we had done so many times before I'm gonna miss you John I'm gonna miss you Cindy while well, you're speaking it's reminding me of uh, as everyone was speaking it's reminding me of, I don't remember what the movie's name is, but it's the name of, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, who's Mark from Mark and Bibby? Um, Robin Williams. Robin Williams. Um, he had that movie where he treated people at a ranch and it was comical and he did all these things. Um, what's what was the name of the movie? Bad Job? Yes. So next time I watch that movie, I know what John looks like, then I'll put jo picture John's face for Robin Williams as he's treating these people, and um, and that's what it seems like that he was. That movie would probably express his life. If I'm if I'm wrong, please let me know. But that, I think that's what I would think. 
the easiest thing right now is for everyone in this room to be here for this family. And when they walk out this door, it's going to be very hard for them. For the weeks, the days, the months. As they begin a new normalcy um, with their family. Yes. He, was, he said he wanted to help me. Oh, right. I'm fine. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, you're fine. This is all about John and Cindy. What do you want to say? Well, I'm not sure what it is I'm supposed to say for you, but I will say that Granddad was Asher's hero. Um, we call Granddad a lot. We talked about Granddad a lot. Did lots of magic tricks. Spent in Asher's been the same how Granddad. We both been tall to the right books. Station 9 on Briarfield, and he was on duty. And my, my wife and two kids were probably 10 and 6 at the time, came to visit me at the station. And the first thing John did was to pull out a rope, a little for a string, and he did a magic trick. And my kids are now in their 40s, have kids of their own. And when I told them about John's passing, all I had to do was say, the guy with the string. And they knew exactly who I was talking about. And that was 30 some years ago. And I bet a lot of you don't know this about John. But John and his crew at Station 5 are partially responsible for the, the wild turkeys getting to the point where they were and had to be taken out. They used to feed them at Station 5. They showed up every day around dinner time. <laughs> Hi, I'm Katie. I am one of John's many nieces, and I just wanted to thank everybody on behalf of my entire family for you guys coming. I know it's really hard to go to a funeral, and I appreciate that you guys were here to be with us in our grief. Um, when I think about my uncle, I think about this book that I read a long time ago when I was in college. We had a priest come to our house and in an effort to connect to me, he told me about this book that I had to read. It was a bunch of kids that went to this magical academy and some kid that had a lightning bolt on his head. I told him that was a stupid book and nobody was ever going to read it. <laughs> so um, I refused and then he told me about a great author called C.S. Lewis. And I don't know if anybody is familiar with C.S. Lewis, but he wrote this book called The Great Divorce. And um, it has nothing to do with divorce. It's actually a bunch of people from purgatory. And in the book, purgatory is described as a place that's just gray all the time. Never really rains, sun never shines. And these people take a bus ride to heaven. And when they get to heaven, they try to jump off the bus. Heaven is beautiful, as we all know. And when they get off the bus, they can't walk. Their hands go right through the grass. Because in heaven, the grass is made of a stronger substance than these people from purgatory. And when I think of my uncle, I think of somebody who was made of a stronger substance than the rest of us. In a world where people are fake and selfish and worried about getting up and waiting at 3 o'clock in the morning for the newest Stanley Cup, he was somebody who thought of others. He was effortlessly good. He was effortlessly kind, and he brightened everybody's day. So I truly believe that he was made of a greater substance than most of this world. And I just thank you guys for being here again. I'm going to have to read that book now. <laughs> Great book. I've never read that book. I'll have to get it and put it into my library. Because I like reading. I'm always looking for books. 
books. If I go to the beach um, on vacation, I, I take books with me. So I can read probably three or four books while I'm at the beach. Everybody else is on their phones, not paying attention to the kids and everything. And, you know, and, um, you know, as I said, you're going to have to be here for this family over the next few days, weeks, months, even years. Mourning a loved one takes its process. It affects all of our hearts, and it's a new normalcy in our life. You know, something that's been plucked out. And you have Cindy and John, which sound like very awesome people that have impacted everyone in this room in a certain way and left that legacy. And uh, you're not going to find anything to fill that, that hole except for the love that they have given you. Um, besides Jesus Christ. And so I ask you as friends and families with each other, please be patient. Because you don't know how each other mourn the loss of somebody. And the next time you go to the beach, or if you see a sailboat, you know the sound of the sea can change almost instantly from wind fury to sleep lapping. So it is with John and Cindy's life. They were the everyday sound of the musical sound of love and life. That's from what I'm hearing. Today, as we watch sailboats go out and boats go out, and they go out and out, out of sight. But as they're out of sight and you stand there on the shore, you still feel the waves hitting your feet from the wake that they have left behind. And it is the same as John and Cindy's life. You have all testified to that today. Hold that. Cherish that. Because you don't hear that from people. I've heard so much love today from John and Cindy that over my 12 years as a chaplain, I've never heard this much love for two individuals like this. So we are the beginning to feel the impact of the waves and the legacy that has left and how it will impact each and every one. The sea they travel will be kind, a gentle sea, because John and Cindy deserve that. Whatever we see, whenever we see the waves riding high and white, and whenever we see the soft billows of froth of the water's edge, you have to remember that when you're at the beach. So for as much as it pleased God Almighty in his wide providence to take out of this world, the soul of our sister, Cindy, and our brother, John. We therefore commit their bodies, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Looking for the resurrection at the last days and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose coming to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead. The body of those who sleep in him shall be changed and be made in his bodies according to that power by which he's able to subdue all things unto himself. If you would all recite the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Long before there were telephones and radios across our great nation, fire departments used the telegraph, using special codes to receive fire alarms from those once familiar red flares alarm boxes, which stood on particularly every street corner of America. When a firefighter was killed, fell in the line of duty, the fire alarm once would tap out a special signal. This would be tapped out in five nature dashes, then a pause, then five nature dashes, then a pause, and then five more major dashes. This came to be called the five, five, and five, and was broadcast over the telegraph fire alarm circuits to all stations, houses in the vicinity. Heard outside on the streets with the department windows open, 
The resonating echo was sim similar to that of a fire station of old where fire alarms going down sounded and locations of thousands of emergencies throughout the history of our growing country. our service again. Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm going to leave the family out to the back of the chapel and then as y'all exit you can speak to them as you leave. Thank you again for coming.
get uh, get going. Perfect. And I'm going to play some of that. Uh, Thank you. That's right.